Mr. Gary, I know, I know, I'm making another video, I know, it's annoying, but bear with me, because you bring up a lot of really good points, and, you know, unlike you, I am not a budding novelist, I don't really want to write it all down. You bring up a lot of really good stuff, and I can, you know, so I have to make a video to engage with you. It's fun for me to make a video, it would it'd be torture for me to write this stuff, it would literally be torture. So, you write your books, and I'll answer you with my videos, deal? Okay, now, one of the things I'm not sure if you're aware of, because it doesn't seem to me like you are, your questions are great, okay, they are first-rate theological questions, but you need to, or you should be aware of the fact that, that almost all of them are answered by Christian theology, literally answered, then I know you're not a Christian, so you don't necessarily believe that Christian theology is true, but all of the things you bring up are literally answered. Now, let me start at the beginning. Let's just start with evil. What it is and what it is not. And, and your question about why doesn't God create morally perfect beings. Okay. Now this, everything I'm going to be telling you is, is in accordance with Christian theology and my own opinions. Okay. So God is alone in the universe. And he wants to create beings to fellowship with him. That is the purpose. That is the purpose. He wants to create people to share in the universe with him. So he goes and creates angels and he creates human beings. Now, in order for our company, in order for us to have real fellowship with God, for our fellowship to have any meaning, he has to create us with free will. And free will, which, which is not being understood by the conversation that you guys are having on Twitter. Free will means this. Me, myself, and you, Gary, you, we are both independent of God. I am not, an, a, a, you were saying, why doesn't God create people who are beings that are morally perfect? He would have to create a hundred million of himself. That was not the point. He wants to create beings that can freely choose to reject him. Otherwise, their fellowship with him is completely and utterly meaningless. Take me, for example, okay, Mr. Holy Roller, Mr. More Christian Than Christian. Just this morning, I was tempted to watch porn. Wow, lo and behold, I may have even actually done it a little. Therefore, I am completely an independent being from God. I love God, and I worship God, and I say that I follow God, and I try to obey God, but I am completely and utterly independent from Him. I can, at times, choose things other than what He wants, and I often do. Now, let's take you, for example. Same idea. You are completely and utterly independent of God. You are completely free to live out your life as you choose. This is why, ultimately, when you come to love God, it's going to have meaning to God because you were free to choose something else. This is why when I came to love God, it's meaningful to Him because I was completely free to choose something else. Now, is there a dark side to freedom? Well, let's take somebody else, for example. Well, first, first let's examine the freedom, what we have done with the freedom. Now, you yourself are a free, independent person from God. Are you, in any meaningful way, an evil person? I, I don't, I mean, I don't really know you that well, but I don't think so. You seem like a perfectly decent person. So what have you taken your freedom to do? Do you torture little children with, your, with the freedom that God gave you? No. I mean, I'd be surprised. I don't think so. But I would say no. So you use your freedom to act in accordance with your own nature. So what do you do? You know, you philosophize a lot, you, you say God doesn't exist, and you spend a lot of time arguing against his character. Okay, so those on balance probably aren't all that, you know, it's probably a little annoying to God, but are you in any meaningful way a bad person? I doubt it. Okay, so you use your freedom, and you freely use the freedom God has given you, but you don't use it to do anything too morally abhorrent. Why? Because you're a pretty decent human being. Okay, that's fairly obvious. But now let's take somebody completely different from you and I. Completely different. Who also has complete freedom. Let's take Joseph Mengele. Now, I don't know if you know very much about who this person was. And I don't want to go too deep into it because it's completely morally abhorrent. But I promise you, 
He was a very different kind of human being than you and I were. And if you read up on him for just a little, you'll see within minutes that this person was absolutely morally repulsive through and through. So you take your freedom and what do you do with it? You do some things that are a little bit annoying to God. You do some things that maybe aren't necessarily good. You know, you like to philosophize, you like to think about things, and you like to say God doesn't exist. So, so you know, you're not a perfect person, but you're certainly not a bad person. You're not evil in any meaningful sense of the term. Now, why this gets confused is because I'm sure there are some Christians who tell you that you are. I'm not one of them. I'm not he's stupid like that, okay? You're not, you're a decent person, for the most, as far as I know. So you're not using your freedom to do anything really, really dark. Now let's take Mengele. What did he use his freedom to do? Literally torture children. Literally. You can go look it up. He would, have form, he would perform experiments on Siamese twins. I mean, stuff that will just literally make you sick to even hear about. It's so horrible. So horrible. That person was and truly is evil in every sense of the word. Are you? No. Are you like him? No. Some of the things that he did, you, would, you wouldn't even be able to do. I sincerely doubt that you could start torturing a kid. You'd start feeling really bad about it as soon as you started. Most normal people would. Evil people would not. That's the difference. They really are evil. The Bible calls it the mystery of iniquity. It's a mysterious thing. They, they really have taken the freedom of God and they use it to do evil. And the reason they do that is because they enjoy it. There's something really sick and dark about these people, okay? Now, let's take that guy, Joseph Mengele. He literally would torture children. And literally the reason he did it was because he enjoyed doing it. And did he feel bad about it? No, he wanted to keep doing it. Now, does that guy deserve to be punished forever? Probably. Would that be just? Probably. Does that guy deserve to be punished forever? Maybe, and probably. Do you? No, of course not. Maybe some Christians have told you you do, but of course not. On balance, you're a pretty decent moral guy. Is, is God going to sentence you to hell? I doubt it. You know, I sincerely doubt it. The message of Christianity is not, you know, here is God, let's judge everybody. It's God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but so that they could believe on him and get saved. Now, when we talk about heaven, okay, you talk about why is there so much evil in the world? Because of humans. When we get to heaven, coincidentally, there is no sickness, no sorrow, no evil, and no death. What a coincidence. And what's the difference up there is that God is in charge. And who goes there? People who are willing to have God in charge because they love him or they want, they want him to be in charge. That's who goes there. And they live forever and forever and forever with no sickness, no sorrow, no suffering, and no death. What a coincidence. All the things you complain about are not there, and they're not there forever. Now, does somebody like Mengele possibly des deserve punishment forever? Yes. Does someone like you? Probably not. Okay, does someone like me? No. <laughs> I'm a Christian. <laughs> no, probably not. You probably don't, and you probably won't wind, you will probably wind up in heaven. Now, I know you don't believe Christian theology necessarily, but it explains all of this. You go back to the Garden of Eden. Is the Garden of Eden literally true? Doesn't matter. The spiritual truth of it is what is important. Is it literally true? Is it literally a place that existed with the talking snake? I don't know. Not important. The spiritual truth is important. Coincidentally, in the Garden of Eden, there was also no sickness, no sorrow, no suffering, and no death. All the things that you're complaining about in this world. And what happened? Man partook of the tree. What tree? The tree of the knowledge of good and evil. That is very, very important. Because that is the nature of the fall. When God is in charge and God is saying, this is what's evil, don't do it. That's what makes heaven heaven. When we decide for ourselves what is right and what is wrong, when we partake 
of the knowledge of the tree of good and evil. We decide for ourselves. We always skewer it in favor of what feels good to us. Always. Woody Allen, when he was dating Sun Yi, said something very illuminating. He said, the heart wants what it wants. That is the moral condition of the world we live in. Because that is what people actually are. It is not God wants them to be that or God allows them to be that. They do what they actually are. God created us completely independent from Him. That is why our fellowship with Him has meaning. Because we can freely walk away from it. We can freely choose otherwise. But most people are like you. That's why you don't understand evil. Because you aren't. You don't understand somebody who would use their free will to torture children. But that is literally what Joseph Mengele did. Free will, just like you and me. Free to choose. And he, he became what he actually is. That is, the, that is what's really going on in the world today. Human beings become what they want to become. Not what God tells them to become. They, be, they act in accordance with their nature. Now, for the most part, that is harmless, like with you. It's meaningless. You know, it's, they do harmless, stupid things. They aren't necessarily bad. They just do things that, don't, that aren't necessarily good either. That's really what's going on. Now, I mean, there's more to get into, but I think that's a good start. Uh, let, me, let me have you listen to this and see what you say.